Hello YouTube. I have got another piece of large dogwood. This is what's remaining of a very large piece of dogwood. It started out being about, uh, I believe it was 18 inches wide at the widest point and close to 15 inches wide at the narrow side, approximately 30 inches long. I don't even know what the weight is yet. I, I believe it was upwards of 200 pounds for a piece that size. It's certainly one of the heaviest, densest woods in the United States. You've got lignum vitae, which is obviously going to be a whole lot harder and heavier. And you've got this Osage orange or um, hedgewood, which is a bit harder, uh, but not much harder, just a little bit harder and a bit heavier. Anyway, I think this is going to become a couple of live edge, large uh, serving platter slash cutting boards. It may end up being a couple of uh, dogwood end tables, or it might just turn into a bunch of pen blanks. I don't think I'll go pen blank because this is the biggest piece of dogwood I've ever got my hands on. Most dogwood is this big. This is sort of the average size of a piece of dogwood that we find here that's died naturally. They don't get very big. This tree here, I can't really see the rings on it, but this small tree is probably close to 35 years old or so. It's a fairly old tree. They just don't get very big very quickly. This tree, on the other hand, is actually um, about the same age. It was grown in the city versus out in the woods and the growth rings are quite a bit bigger on this but it's still a fairly slow growing tree i imagine this tree might be closer to um based on the house it came from this tree might be closer to 40 40 45 years somewhere in that area so still a, a fairly fairly small tree for its age we've got oak trees we planted when we were children in there you know better part of two foot in diameter after uh 30 years versus something like this got a few other pieces of dogwood down here most of that's dogwood there's a few other pieces of wood mixed in but dogwood just does not get very big i don't know if you can see the growth rings in this or not uh, you can probably just barely barely make out the growth rings i believe i counted the rings on this piece and had somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 50 years and it's about a about a four and a half, maybe five inch across the uh, widest point. So not a very, not a very old or not a very large tree for as old as it is. But it is definitely my favorite wood to work with. Osage has long been one of my favorites, but dogwood, if you're a carver, there is absolutely not a better wood in my opinion. This stuff just carves so smooth whether you're carving with the grain or across the grain or just any which way. It carves like butter. Obviously, you need to have good sharp tools, but the spalting patterns you get in here, the spalting colors and patterns, really, uh, really make some pretty rings. I've made quite a few dogwood rings, and they're just extremely durable. This stuff is very hard to break. I've made dogwood spatulas and uh, a couple of musical accessories out of dogwood. It is not a very dimensionally stable wood. It tends to want to warp, twist, bend, crack. You can see all the cracks in here. This is not, not normal to have such a small tree with such big cracks in it. And the only reason the cracks aren't bigger is the ends of these. I seal most of ours with a, um, a wax product called Anchor Seal or Anchor Seal 2. But it, um, it does a lot to keep these from cracking. However, dogwood is going to crack. If you've got a piece of dogwood and you're trying to dry it, it is going to crack. There is absolutely, that I've found at least, no way around it if it's, if, unless you mill it down and put it into a, a container and very slowly remove the moisture over the course of a, a year, which is what we've actually done to a couple pieces to dry them without cracking them too badly, but they're still going to try to twist and bend on you. So you need to make your boards wider, wider, thicker, and, and longer than you think you need for the finished product, and then wait a very long time. We've, we've tried to vacuum the moisture off of them. We've tried everything so far except for um, silica moisture absorbing packs, which we've heard good things about. I'm not sure how to work with dogwood, 
but that's next on our list to try. So I will go ahead without further ado, get the saw fired up. I'm using the Resaw King by Laguna. This is on a 150 inch track on this saw. So we've got a 150 inch length blade, 20 inch wide cut on this jet 20 inch woodworking band saw. I've increased the height on this saw by removing the cast iron table that came with it and removing the upper roller bearing setup and just putting a, a hardwood guide on here to help um, increase the height as much as I can get. And I've got about 17 vertical inches now between the bottom bearing and the bottom of the upper guide at the highest point. And with this 150 inch Laguna Resaw King blade, it, it doesn't seem to have any issue at all cutting a board the better part of um, 16 and a half inches vertical resawing. It is by far my favorite blade. I've been using it now for, I believe we've been using it for the better part of uh, three months now, two and a half, three months, something in that area. And I have cut a lot of wood and not all of it, the prettiest uh, lumber grade stuff. So it's a pretty good blade. I've uh, generally been happy with it. It does seem to be getting just a little bit dull, but it can't be that dull if it's cutting through 16 and a half or 17 inches of vertical wood. A dull blade is not going to do that no matter how few teeth you put on it. This, I believe, is a, a one and a half to two tooth per inch, if I'm not uh, not mistaken. I'll put a link below for a couple of the items we use here in the shop. I do highly recommend one of these remote start, remote start outlets for your... Uh, your vacuum system and they've got these to where when you turn your tool on it automatically turns on your vacuum system we use that on our table saws and our uh, chop saws this one we use on the band saw because it's just more convenient for us plus we want to leave it running for a while after we turn the tool off okay here we go cut some wood safety first Read the manuals, wear your safety gear. If I say anything that contradicts the manuals, do not listen to me. The manuals know best. This is how I do it, not how I recommend anybody else does it. Get my measurements. I've got a gauge of a quarter inch underneath the deck. Just have to take a quarter inch off of it and I got my thickness. So we're going to make about a one inch slab of flowering dogwood. This was not a live tree and I did not cut it down. I would never cut a living dogwood. Like it's not even there. I'm feeding it pretty slowly, but you don't have to. This blade has no problem taking wood off. That's prettier than I expected. That whole board is almost all quarter sawn. The grain's a little funny in this kind of wood. That, that uh, speckling you see is where it started to fold. You kind of get the leopard print pattern going on. My favorite wood. I love this stuff. I think one of my urethane rollers is going out, one of my tires, polyurethane tires, or urethane tires. I think one of the urethane tires is starting to go on me.
put a little counterbalance on their deck. Get a little tippy. One straight cut and blade. This will probably be the last cut for this piece. It's getting kind of thin.
pretty work. That piece of wood doesn't seem to have any bugs in it. I think. I'm probably going to save this piece for a rolling pin. It doesn't have any particular characteristics about it, in my mind, that would make it good for much of anything else. So I think that is going to be a rolling pin. And I can always change my mind later and cut it down thinner. But for now, that's all I'm going to do. I managed to get quite a, quite a little bit of lumber out of a relatively small piece of wood. And I'd say that piece of... Uh, got real pretty character, actually, in the, uh, the coloration of it. And that's a nice quarter sawn piece. I didn't even notice that at first. You can see the flex coming through it. Real pretty piece of quarter sawn wood. This is some of the lumber pieces that I got out of this. They're all about an inch and an eighth to an inch and a quarter thick. I believe that's the largest piece there. That piece alone will probably get uh, put in a press to let it let it dry as straight as I can. Put some kind of a metal metal clamp on front and back of metal bars to try to hold it flat while that one air dries. The rest of these we'll probably put them inside of something like a, a Rubbermaid trash can or Rubbermaid tote, cover it with sawdust, which will help hold the moisture in and let it dry a little bit more slowly, and figure out what we're going to do with these. If you all have any recommendations on what you think we ought to do with some of these pieces of dogwood, I'd love to hear it. We've got quite a lot of other dogwood. This is the largest piece we've ever had the chance to mill up. And there's still quite a bit of work left in getting the ends sealed the rest of the way and getting all this wood clamped together and strapped together and ready to start drying. But if you have any suggestions on what we ought to do with it, we'd certainly love to see them in the comments below or drop us a message and we'll see what we can do for you. If you've enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. And if you'd like to see reference and links for any of the tools we used here, probably my favorite of the tools is the remote start for your vacuum. These are handy. I'll put a link below for that. The Laguna Resaw King, which is kind of the, the main star of this video. I've, I've gone through so many blades on this thing in the last year, and these are just the blades that I decided to keep to cut some softwoods with. But I've probably got around about a dozen. I think one of these is new, actually. That one, that's a new one. All the rest of these are used. They've got a little bit of tooth left, but not enough to do much with. A few more blades over here. Quite a mess in here. This shop gets used a lot, but uh, organization is not exactly my strong suit. You can see my clamps stuck to the ceiling up there. Seems to be a pretty good place for them. Anyway, this Resaw King blade by Laguna has probably cut, I'd say at least as much as uh, three or four of these other blades did in their lifespan. And it's still going strong. Cutting through a piece of wood that's 16 or 17 inches tall is not an easy task. And especially cutting through a piece of dogwood is not an easy task with a brand new blade. Even this stuff is, um, is pretty difficult stuff to cut. I have not cut much of this yellow Osage wood on this Resaw King blade yet. I'm trying to, I'm still trying to take it kind of easy on this thing because they're, they're fairly expensive blades. I do believe that they're worth it just in not having to change the blade constantly. I usually have a full, a full sliding table that extends onto the other side of the blade as well. And it's just not easy to, to swap blades in and out along with the vacuum systems in here. There's quite a lot that I've got to disassemble every time I go to swap a blade out or clean the system up. 
So a blade that doesn't have to be replaced very often for someone who uses their saw a lot will definitely pay for itself just in the cost savings of the downtime. So I, I believe this was a good investment. I'm actually considering buying another one so that when this one gets dull, I can send it off for resharpening. They say you can get between two and five resharpenings. And last time I checked, it was, uh, I believe it was $45 to get it resharpened. But that also includes your return shipping. So you ship it out to Laguna, they'll resharpen it and ship it back to you for a total of $45 as of this video and my last check on it. So you can get quite a bit of life out of these blades and I do believe they pay for themselves. And they, when they first arrive, they are just razor blade sharp. I'd say that's actually still probably sharp enough that it's catching my skin. It doesn't quite catch my nail like it did when it was brand new, but it's still catching. You can probably hear that. It's still carving up my... Uh, yeah, I can't quite get it to focus there. Nope, I don't think it's going to happen. Oh, there's a little bit. So it's a sharp blade, and I do recommend it. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. Check out the um, details below. I've left links in there for some of the equipment in here. And if you see another tool you'd like to have reviewed, we'd love the opportunity to purchase it and review it for you. Thanks for watching.